I will be discussing one of the important topic today that's all about the decision table. What exactly the decision table based testing and how do we understand the different parts of the decision based testing. The first step that I have is all about the condition stuff. If I say A1, so A1 in the sense it's not a triangle. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on software testing. Yes, what is the topic for the day? So I will be discussing decision table based testing in today's session. What exactly is decision based testing? So most of you would have got this question in software testing. We had discussed some of the important problems that is triangle problem, next date problem and also we had discussed commission problem. So, what was the purpose of discussing all those problems? I think you will have the solution in today's session. So guys, I will be discussing one of the important topic today. That's all about the decision table. So let's understand what is the agenda for the day. So I have the first topic as decision table based testing. What exactly the decision table based testing and how do we understand the different parts of the decision based testing is what I will be discussing here. So fine, after that the second topic which I am going to discuss is all about decision table based testing with respect to the triangle problem. So that's a, one of the important concepts that I need to understand. So you all know that we have discussed what exactly triangle problem is all about. But now in today's session I will be discussing what exactly the triangle problem is all about with respect to the decision based testing. So let's understand that and followed by I have the test cases for the triangle problem which I have already discussed in my previous sessions too. But so let me discuss this again because this will be a continuation for you guys. So fine without wasting much of your time let me get into the session. So guys uh, this is the decision table skeleton of the structure that I would like to present to all of you. So one thing you need to observe in the slide that I have. What is that? The colors whatever I have chosen. So I have taken the same colors to represent this box. So what is the meaning of it sir? So let's understand this table part by part. So this column whatever I have the first column this column I will call it as a stub. In this stub I will have two different types of stub. The first stub that I have is all about the condition stub. So this color hope all of you are able to see this. Okay this is what I will call it as a condition stub. I have C1, C2, C3. Sir, I can have n number of stubs, okay, with respect to the conditions, there is no limit. Sir, you have only three conditions. So it's up to you how many number of conditions your problem wants. So you can have that many number of conditions. That's a point number one. Point number two, so I have the action stub. I have the action stub. What exactly action stub is all about? So guys, so this is what you need to understand it as input, okay, this is the input and this is what you will call it as a output. So this is what you can expect it as a output. So input and output. So guys, this is what I will call it as a action stuff. So for this input, so what is the reaction? What is the action that you have got? So that's what you need to understand. So in general. So fine. So what exactly this is all about? So please observe, I can have rules, rule one to rule n. This column, each column, represents the rules rule one to rule n you can have so what is that i have which is marked with the green color so please understand this is what i will call it as a condition entries whatever i have here true false that's what i will call it as a condition entry and this is what i will call it as a action entries so these four things you need to remember before i start the next topic i repeat so you have four things. The first one is a condition stop and the second one is all about the action stop and this is what I will call it as a condition entry and this is what I will call it as a action entry. So fine. So you got to know the skeleton of the decision table. Let's take up the triangle problem and let's understand how exactly we are trying to represent the triangle problem with respect to the decision table. So let's look into it so now guys i have the decision table with me 
So let's understand what exactly the decision table with respect to the triangle problem is all about. In the previous slide, I have explained in detail the different parts of the decision table. Now let's implement that for the decision table with respect to the triangle problem. Let's understand this first. So guys, I have already told you, so C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6. What exactly this C series is all about? The C series is nothing but the conditional stuffs that I have. So the different conditions that I have as an input. That's what you need to understand. So in total, I have six conditions. So fine. What exactly A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 is all about? This A1 to A5, what I have here is all about the action stuffs. If I say A1, so A1 in the sense it's not a triangle. If I say A2, it's a scaling triangle. If I say A3, it's an isosceles triangle. A4 in the sense equilateral triangle. A5 in the sense it is impossible. So fine, I understood the different actions that I have and I understood that different conditions that I have. So how are we going to understand this table? So let's understand it in a simple way. Suppose if this condition is false if this condition is false then directly i will check and i will come to this action stop and i will check so it is not a triangle if this condition fails then the output is it's not a triangle so fine so whatever i have as a dash so this dash i will treat it as don't care condition all right so you just have to ignore it so fine i will come to the second rule so please understand this is what i will call it as a rule one rule two rule three rule four goes on that's what i have explained in the last slide please don't forget that so fine let's come to the rule two so if this condition is true and the second condition is false then i will be getting this output as a not a triangle in the same way let me come to the rule three so what exactly the rule three is saying first condition is true again the second condition is true but please observe i have the third condition which is false what will be my result even in that case my output will be not a triangle so same way i will come to the rule four so please observe the condition number one is true the condition number two is also true three is also true four is also true five is also true and the sixth one is also true if all the condition is true my output will be equilateral triangle that's what you need to understand so fine what is the rule number five says so let me explain this rule number five so according to the rule number five if the condition is true, the first condition is true, the second one is true, third one is true, fourth one is true, fifth one is true. But if the sixth one is not true, that is false. So I will be getting my output as impossible. I'll be getting my output as impossible. That's what you need to understand. In the same way, all the conditions are true, except condition number five is false. Then what will be my output? So please observe again, even here also, my output will be impossible. That's what you need to understand. In the same way, so you will be verifying all the different rules so that I have. So this is how I will be writing the decision table for a triangle problem. So guys, moving forward to the test cases that I have with respect to the triangle problem. Let's understand the different types of triangles that we have, which we have already discussed before I start the test cases for the triangle problem. So guys, you all know that the first one that we have here is a scale and triangle. When we have the scale and triangle, all the sides, whatever I have in the triangle are different. So that's what I will call as a scale and triangle. So fine. The next one that I have is equilateral triangle. What exactly the equilateral triangle is all about? All the sides are equal. That's what I will call it as an equilateral triangle. And the last one that I have is isosceles triangle. When it comes to the isosceles triangle, so two sides are equal. So guys, that's what I will call it as an isosceles triangle. So fine. So let's understand the test cases for the triangle problem. So guys, let's understand what is the first thing that I have. This is what I will call it as a case id this is what i will call it as a case id which starts from 1 to 12 so fine i have a b c what exactly this a b c this a b c is what i will call it as a inputs so fine i have three inputs because my triangle is of three sides and i have the expected output 
based on the input i will be predicting what type of triangle is all about so fine so let's understand how exactly we are trying to do it so guys what is the first case that i have so i have going a value as 4 b value as 1 and c value as 2 so how do i say on what basis i say that is not a triangle so guys please don't forget in my last slide i have told you so we have three conditions so what exactly that i need to check is I need to satisfy all these three conditions only then I will be calling that as a triangle otherwise if any one condition fails also I will be calling that as a not a triangle. So that's what you need to keep it in mind if any one condition fails so please observe here. So the first two conditions are true but the last condition is false so even then I will call that as a not a triangle. So fine keep that in mind so this is very very important. So what are the conditions that I have? So please observe this condition. I will be writing it again. So fine. So what is the first condition that I have? A is less than B plus C. That is the first condition that I have. The next one I have is B is less than A plus C. So that is the second condition that I have. So the third, third one is C is less than A plus B. So this is what the conditions that I have. So please observe here. That's what I have written. All right. So fine. So let's check this. So I have the first uh, value, all right. So what is the A value? A value is 4, all right. So A value is 4. 4 is less than B value is 1 plus 2. So that is 4 is less than 1 plus 2, that is 3. So guys, here my condition fails. Here my condition fails. I don't have to check for these two. So in the first itself, it fails. So I will call it as a not a triangle. So that's what you need to understand. So fine. So let's go to the second case. So what is the second case that I have? So I have again, I have a not a triangle. How do I say that is not a triangle? Let's check. So what is the A value that I have? So I have the A value as one. All right. Let me just write that. So I have the A value as one. Okay. One is less than four plus two. Okay. All right. Four plus two. So this condition one is less than six. True. Okay, let's go for the second condition. Let's check for the second condition. So what is the B value? I have 4 is less than what is the A value 1 plus C value is 2. 4 is less than 3. So here my condition fails. So again, based on this condition, I will say it as not a triangle. So that's what you need to understand. Let's check for the third case. All right, let me erase it. So what is the thing that I have? <coughs> yes, let's check the third one. So what is the condition? What is the A value that I have? A is one, one is less than two plus four. All right, so two plus four, it's, it holds good. One is less than six, it's correct. So what is the third one that I have? So what is the second one? B, okay, B, two is less than A plus one plus C. So C in the sense four. So again, it's correct. So two is less than five. Let's check the third one. So the third one is C. So C, what is the C value that I have? Four is less than A value. That is A value is one plus B value is two. Guys, four is not less than three. So here my condition fails for the third one. On this basis, I will call this is not a triangle. So hope you understood how did we arrive at a not a triangle output. All right. So that's what you need to understand. So fine. So moving on. So if I have you no know, empty outputs, so I will treat this as a impossible. If I same thing in the sixth also, when it comes to the seventh one. So please observe. When do I call this as a isosceles triangle? So you all know that isosceles triangle is treated as when two sides are equal. So please observe A value is equal to B value. So then I will call that as a isosceles triangle. That's what you need to understand. Again, uh, it's empty. So it is impossible is what I've written. Then again, two sides are equal. I have written it as isosceles. And again, here also two sides are equal. So I have written it as isosceles that's what you need to understand so guys all the sides are different so i will call it as a scalene triangle all the sides are different i have called it as a scalene triangle this is what you need to know with respect to the test cases of triangle problem by saying this so guys 
I would like to tell you. So we will be writing the decision tables and the test cases for all the problems what we have discussed. That is triangle problem, next date problem and the commission problem. So this is what you need to understand. So this is what you need to learn. Thank you very much. I will be winding up the session.